The Darksaber is the true curse of Mandalore and has been slowly leading to the destruction of the Mandalorian Creed for some time now. But why exactly is this? And why is the Blade of Tarvisla cursed? How exactly does this set up the next generation of the Mandalorians? Major spoilers lie ahead for the season finale of The Mandalorian, Chapter 24, The Return. In a shocking turn of events, the Darksaber has now been destroyed. The relic that held the Mandalorian people together for dozens of generations now, the symbol of leadership, and possibly one of the most unique weapons in galactic history, is now seemingly gone. Crushed at the hand of Moth Gideon in a valiant battle for Mandalore, in a way, it was almost as if the Darksaber had given its own life for the soul of its home. And for that, I think we can all rest easy. But why exactly did we state that the Darksaber was a cursed weapon? For the last several generations, the Darksaber has not been a weapon of unity for the Mandalorian people. In fact, it's been one that has divided them to their very core. As stated by Bo-Katan Kreese, as well as the armor, there are many factions of Mandalorians, and one of their major pitfalls is their massive amount of infighting putting each respectable group and tribe above the very creed of the Mandalorians. As time went on, the true value of the Darksaber itself was diminished. If we look back all the way to the Clone Wars, we can see that although Pre Vizsla wielded the Darksaber, the ancient ancestral weapon of Tar Vizsla, he belonged to a small faction of extremist Mandalorians in Death Watch, and the Mandalorian creed at this time was far from united despite the Darksaber being in play. Following this, the weapon went on to divide the Mandalorians even further when Maul took possession of the blade, fractioning off what remained of Death Watch to the Maldalorians. It's a stretch to say the very least that the Darksaber has been a weapon of unity for some time. The Darksaber served its purpose, but perhaps its end is a blessing, symbolically speaking of course. Though Tar Vizsla was loyal to his people and used his power to bring the clans together, we know that the lightsaber is in fact a Jedi weapon and carries with it the Jedi traditions and values. These values belong to the Jedi, but they do not translate well to the Mandalorians. The Mandalorians are a communal people that value things such as honor and battle. Holding any single weapon as sacred simply because it is a lightsaber is not the way of the Mandalorian. To go even further on how the Darksaber splintered Mandalore during the Night of a Thousand Tears, the very symbolism of Bo-Katan Kreese handing over the Darksaber to yet another who was not a part of the Mandalorian Creed splintered the people of Mandalore even further and led to their nigh extinction. The Children of the Watch, the tribe that the Armorer leads and that Din Djarin is a part of, recognizes this fatal flaw in the Darksaber early on in the season, with the Armorer stating that the arrival of the Mythosaur is exceptionally important and even tells Bo-Katan Kreese that the Mythosaur belongs to all Mandalorians. The Darksaber was a relic that arose after apparently the last Mythosaur was seen. But now with the recent resurgence of the Mythosaur, a new, unifying symbol has been established by the Mandalorians, their original symbol. In the era of the ancient Mandalorians, which is what the Children of the Watch follow, they worshipped and followed the Helm of the Mythosaur. The ancient Mandalorians battled with the Mythosaurs on their home world for generations. And when the Mandalorians were able to conquer a Mythosaur, this was considered the greatest of achievements of their people. Because of this, the first ancient Mandalorians crafted a helmet made entirely of Mythosaur bone, rumored to be stronger than even the finest, most pure Beskar. The last time we were able to document the existence of the Helm of the Mythosaur was in the hands of Condorus Ordo, also known as Mandalore the Preserver. Mandalore the Preserver was the main Mandalorian who helped Revan in his journeys. Around this time, the helmet was lost, hidden away by Revan after the Mandalorian Jedi War, when Mandalore the Ultimate was defeated defeated in single combat. Revan would help Candorus search for the mask, and once it was found, Candorus would unite the Mandalorians under his own house banner. However, there is no record of where or how Candorus Ordo died, nor what happened to the mask of the Mandalore, not even whispers. A good guess is that the helm may have been buried with him. What's important to note is that in Legends, no one succeeded Candorus as Mandalore following the passing of the Preserver, making him the last official Mandalore. After Candorus, the Mandalorians went many years without a Mandalore of their own at all, until the Sith elected a Mandalorian gladiator to become their new leader. This man was known as Mandalore the Lesser, and he was just used as a puppet by the Sith to control the Mandalorians. Importantly though, Mandalore the Lesser never held the mask of the Mythosaur.
Candorous Ordo was the last time that the mask was ever seen and was relevant to history. But what of this new age? What's important to note is that the only Mandalorians that remained are the warriors. The average Mandalorian citizen was wiped away by the Empire during the Night of a Thousand Tears. This in itself, this purge, is reminiscent of the Jedi Purge and the reformation of the Jedi Order, with Luke Skywalker himself in Legends continuity being more inspired by the ancient Jedi Masters than the Masters of the Clone War. The Mythosaur is the very foundation of Mandalorian culture, not the Darksaber. Its skull is a symbol to all Mandalorian people, and the beast is shared by all Mandalorians, no matter what tribe or clan they are from. The Mythosaur represents the very unity of the Mandalorian creed, wherein the Darksaber no longer does. This leads us to our next point, Din Grogu. Din Grogu, because of his Jedi training, has the ability of beast control, and will be crucial in the taming of the Mythosaur and this new age of Mandalore. We talked about how a departure from the Jedi customs concerning the Darksaber is a good thing, but perhaps they just need to stray away from the worship of weapons, and focus on the preservation of life and of their ancient histories. The Darksaber was a weapon, a symbol of conquest. While combat will always be a part of the Mandalorian culture, perhaps their time for conquests is now over. A merging of some Jedi principles with the way could do some good, so long as they are the right Mandalorian principles. It is likely Grogu who senses the Mythosaur that will one day ride the beast, and perhaps even tame it completely, bringing all of the Mandalorian people together under their original sigil. It's important though that the Darksaber was a valuable weapon for a time, but it was never a weapon that was meant to permanently unite all of Mandalore. This is not to say, though, that we have seen the last of the Darksaber, just the Darksaber in this form. The crystal, the black heart of the blade itself, likely remains intact, and with the help potentially of a Jedi, the Darksaber can still be reconstructed. What's important, however, is that now, the symbol of Mandalore has officially shifted, a symbol of unity to the Mythosaur, the Mythosaur which belongs to all Mandalorians. The Darksaber may have united Mandalore together once, but now it has only served to divide and cause great strife. But anyway, my friends and acolytes, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the curse of the Darksaber? And do you think that the Mandalorians are wise to go back to their initial creed and belief system? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting our archives. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.